Easily the most recognizable feature of the Sonoran Desert is the saguaro cactus. They can live for hundreds of years. So as Tucson expands further into the desert, it becomes necessary to relocate these giants. Today we'll meet David Hand, who is an expert in the transplanting and care of saguaros. Hi David, where did these saguaro come from? Most of these come from job sites. As the city grows, development happens, the saguaros have to be moved out of the way. If someone's building a house, what should they do with their saguaro? Should they move it or should they leave it there? Depends on the uh, building envelope and how much house space the house is going to take up. That would dictate whether or not they should move it. If it's a little too close to construction, we recommend getting them out of the way so that the subcontractors building the house have room to work. And how close could they be left to the construction site? Well, if it's a big plant, it's really critical that it be moved because they're concerned about uh, transplanting it. Uh, you could dig within maybe five feet away. Oh, that's a lot closer than a tree even then. Yes, it is. Who should not be buying these? These, I'm sure, go out of state. Well, there are certain limitations, certainly climate being the biggest one. Mm -hmm. Some states, uh, obviously, they get so cold, they'd have to move them in and out. Uh, and obviously, that limit the big ones. Uh, people that, that have microclimates or controlled environments can use them. But uh, where it's really brutally cold, they should not. So the Chihuahuan Desert, not a good place for the saguaro. Many parts of the Chihuahuan are too cold. Mojave, uh, they don't do overly well there either. So the Sonoran Desert is really the best place? Oh, by far. The Sonoran Desert, of course, they grow here indigenously. Uh, they transplant extremely well here. If someone is buying a saguaro, how do they know that it's been legally obtained? Well, uh, it'll have one, a tag on it or a blue seal permit, depending on how it was extracted. And then, of course, it would have a permit to go along with that. Uh, okay. And how hard are they to transplant? Uh, it's really pretty easy. Would you like to see? We've got one on the truck. We can demonstrate it for you. I'd like to see that. So you've got the hole already dug here. What do you do to make a hole like this in this soil? Well, we've got it easy here. This soil's nice. We don't have to use a jackhammer. <laughs> but a digging bar and the shovels, uh, dig a nice hole like this. And uh, then we bring in some nice soil mix. We bring in coarse sand and mix it with what came out of the hole so it'll drain well and be nice. Nice and coarse and sandy. Mm -hmm. How deep do you make it relative to the roots? Well, we'll be trimming off the roots, but uh, we'll make it so that the bottom of the roots uh, will nestle down in the, uh, the soil, and it'll be slightly planted deeper slightly than, uh, than the original grade. So just a little bit, though? Yeah, six inches, sometimes as much as a foot on a big plant. Yeah, so it doesn't blow over? Correct. Okay, I notice a lot of cacti, even saguaros here, in the shade of this tree. So shade's not a bad thing. Shade's not a bad thing. This saguaro was pulled with the same orientation and will be planted with the same orientation it came from. But if we, we have a situation where we have no shade, uh, or we pull it out of shade and need to reshade it, we'll, uh, we'll put 30% shade or we'll put a, a spray sunscreen on the plant as well. So you can sunburn them, so you have to make sure the south goes back to the south. Because it's already adapted to the sunshine. Correct. I see you've got a bag of sulfur. We use sulfur. Uh, we use quite a bit of it throughout. Uh, you can't really use too much. We, we found a couple heaping shovelfuls and a hole this size is a good thing, and even a little extra sometimes. And any wounds uh, need to be treated with sulfur to For dry and cauterize. infection and stuff. Right. You've got a saguaro here and it's padded. Yeah, we pad them up because they, they bruise easily. The, their own weight will bruise certain mm -hmm. times a year when they're dehydrated. Uh, out in the desert, we haven't had much rain. They're real dehydrated and their own weight will bruise them just by laying them down like that. I think it's important because a lot of people think of a cactus as an herbaceous plant, but this actually has a woody structure inside it. Right, woody structure inside, but the the outside is quite delicate. So you have to be careful as you handle it. And your guys are ready to plant this, so why don't we get out of the way and let them do it? Okay, good deal. They're really cutting a lot off here. Yeah, they're cutting off anything that'll crush the minute the weight of the saguaro goes down on those roots. If they don't take some of that off, it'll literally just crush and then rot. Those wow. roots will actually rot because of the weight crushing the, 
the roots. And if it's like other plants, at a good fresh clean cut, if it's not crushed there, it's going to regenerate roots. It'll regenerate real rapidly if it's a nice clean flat cut. You don't have to irrigate it because there's so much water stored in the cactus itself. That's right. Now sometimes if the soil, the, the dirt ball is tight enough and compact enough to where it holds those roots in, we'll leave the entire dirt ball together. Mm. And there's no need to cut them off at that point. But some soils uh, slough off and, and fall out, so it's better to cut it off. Better safe than sorry. Correct. Till dust it now with sulfur. So the sulfur's more for antibiotic properties than for pH adjustment. That's right. The plants it, are well adapted to the soil. That's right. It certainly helps with pH with high alkaline soils, but in this case, we're using it for the medicinal value. Okay, yeah, if you were just doing pH, you'd use a granular form. Right. And once you've put the soil back in, do you have to irrigate? Uh, we don't irrigate initially. We recommend that the plants stay dry for 30 days minimum. We would recommend watering every two to three, well, three weeks anyway, a good, a good soaking once established, but nothing for the first 30 days. Wow, this is awesome. Thank you. How heavy is something like this? This plant's uh, probably 1,500 pounds but we've moved plants that exceed 10,000 pounds using large grains. So the equipment's really important. Very important. The Saguaro truck made it look easy because the hydraulics did all the work. Now it looks like it's been here forever. That's the whole idea. What are the chances of long-term survival? About 90%. In fact, right down the street, we uh, carried in about six footers that are now the size of this. How long ago was that? That was like 15 years ago. Wow. Well, thank you for showing us all this. You're very welcome.